This time I'm doing some more work on the Blazer. I recently gathered all of my fuel receipts and input them into one of the apps that tracks your fuel mileage over time and noticed something very surprising. Recently got the best miles per gallon that I've ever gotten with the Blazer, just over 21 MPG. So that got me thinking, what else can I do to get even more miles per gallon out of the truck? So this time I'm gonna tackle a couple of maintenance items and a couple other improvements to try to get a little bit more performance and a little bit more miles per gallon out of the Blazer. Starting with some basic tune-ups like spark plug wires, checking the ignition timing, making sure that the vacuum system is all good and there are no leaks there. And then one of the big things is I'm going to ditch the mechanical fan and install a set of dual electric cooling fans and wire those all up. After that, I'm also going to add a belly pan to the underside of the front of the truck here using some old sheet aluminum that I have sitting around in the garage. So that's gonna be a free mod to see if I can improve the aerodynamics a little bit and get a little bit more gas mileage there. Then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and just change the oil again because it's due. And I'm gonna change it back from 10W40 that I put in here the last time to the manufacturer recommended 5W30 because it's a lighter weight oil and could possibly free up a little bit of power and gas mileage. So stay tuned to the end to see everything and see the results and the final product. So first thing I'm gonna do is swap out the spark plug wires for a brand new set. So it's always best to do these one at a time to make sure you don't screw up the firing order. It also helps to make sure you get the right length on the right cylinder. All right, there's cylinder two off, so we'll find one that's the same length. Well, I just pulled the wire out of the boot. All right, well, of course it turned into a much bigger pain in the ass, but finally got them all changed out. Let's make sure it starts. All good. Now that I've got the spark plug wires in, I'm gonna go ahead and check the engine vacuum real quick. Can't remember if I've mentioned it in any of the previous videos, but I have replaced some of the vacuum lines, but I have not replaced all of them since I got this truck. Just the ones that were leaking badly or a problem were the ones that I focused on. Just gonna tee that in there like that. All right, so let's see, we're reading. Right about, right about 20 pounds of vacuum. All right, well I don't want that to get too hot, but it looks pretty good. Turn that back off. So another tip, I don't know if you can see it back here. This next to the distributor is a junction for a bunch of vacuum tubes. So actually when I got the truck, one of these, I believe this hard line was disconnected, uh, this hard line was disconnected and that feeds into the truck. And because of that, I was not getting normal full control of my HVAC system. Um, I think I just had air blowing out of the lower vents and not the uppers. So once I realized that that was loose back there and I reconnected it, everything worked fine inside the truck. So make sure you, uh, you really watch the vacuum system on these things, they're prone to problems. If you didn't know, the transfer case and the front differential are controlled by the vacuum system so all of that needs to be in good working order for your four-wheel drive to work like i said for the hvac to work properly and vent control because that has a vacuum control valve in the dash as well so vacuum is extremely important and you want to make sure that that is working as it should so one of the other things with this cpi engine the uh, central port injection version of the 4.3 that they made from I don't know, 90 to 95, 91 to 94, something like that. Uh, they only did it for a couple of years in these trucks, but I was doing more reading, learning about the engine. There's always something new to learn and found out that there's actually a little valve in here that changes the length of the intake runners so that you have more torque down low and more horsepower up in the uh, the higher rpm range so a lot of intakes do stuff like that i've never actually seen one up close so i'm going to pop it out and take a look at it that also will give me an opportunity to look down inside the intake manifold and look at the fuel injection spider see if that's leaking possibly i don't think it is but that is another common problem on these engines is the fuel injector spider that sits down in the intake All right, so there's that valve sitting on top right there. Another smaller Torx bit for that one. I don't know why they can't just 
take after the Japanese and make all the bolts like three different sizes on the entire car, but this has never been removed before. All right, so there, there it is, just a valve. So once you get up to, I think it's like above 3000 RPMs, this, I think it closes then and shortens the length of the intake runners. I believe that's how it works, but I could be mistaken on that. So I'm gonna clean that off a little bit before I put that back. Let's see what it looks like down in there. See down there? It really doesn't look too bad. It doesn't really look like the spider is leaking, at least that I can see. So, check the operation of it here real quick. All right, so there you go, it works. That's what it does in the car. Okay. All right, so got the intake um, tuning valve reinstalled after I cleaned it up, everything's hooked back up and uh, all good. While I'm in here, I'm also gonna pop out the map sensor real quick and just clean that sensor off and then reinstall that as well. And with a small port like that, it's gonna spray in my face if I don't cover it. Leave that off for a minute, let that dry. Might as well spray the uh, manifold port out too. While that's off, gently reinstall that. All right, map's back in now too. I haven't put the cover back on the top yet, but because I dumped a bunch of sea foam and carb cleaner down in the intake manifold here when I had that valve out, I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and let it run real quick. Probably smoke a little bit. that it was running bad before but it seems like it's running pretty well now after doing all that so next up I'm going to check the timing and then I want to work on installing the dual electric cooling fans and then after all that I need to work on adding the belly fan to the front so you can see there everything that hangs down getting caught in the wind so i think the belly pan might help with the aerodynamics a little bit certainly at higher speeds and then the last thing that i may try to do here as well since i was thinking about it was the muffler um, since the muffler does leak there's some, a couple of holes in it and it, it's just a crappy cheap you know oe kind of replacement turbo muffler i think um, and i'm thinking that that might help everything out just a little bit as well so every little bit helps I'm not looking for massive gains here just uh, want to make the thing pick up a little bit better at the highway speeds and of course if i can get one or two more miles per gallon out of my average that would be awesome so um, we'll keep at it here and so what i'm using here are two 12 inch fans two relay kits one for each fan So there's the old fan and clutch. Now you can see down in there. Okay, so I've got the fans all installed and wired up here. Fans are on the radiator, all the wiring's in. My two inline fuses for the power are connected to the positive terminal of the battery there, like I talked about before. For the ground wire for the fans, I just connected it to the inner fender over here. The fans are all good and they do work. So ignition and then just temporarily, I've got this little switch down here. Click that, and the fans run.
Okay, so to get started on the exhaust, first thing I need to do is take the old one out, which I'm gonna start by cutting the old tailpipe off. Okay, so here's the old muffler removed. You can hear it's uh, full of rust and real nasty. It's like a rain stick. So obviously I don't need this anymore. Um, probably cut off and reuse this hanger, but I do need to cut the intermediate pipe off of here so that I can attach that to the new muffler. All right, that's off now. And for the tailpipe, I just got a basic turn down here. Still got a couple little holes to fill in there. So at least one more pass with the welder. Okay, new mufflers all installed there. And the last thing I need to do is go ahead and just change the oil real quick. And like I said earlier, I'm going to go back to the OE recommended weight of 5W30 instead of the 10W40 that I had in here on the last oil change. change is all done. That's going to do it for all of the maintenance and modifications that I'm going to do for this video. And now it's time to get out there and put some miles on the clock and see if there's any improvement at all in the miles per gallon. Okay, so now that I've gotten a little bit of driving in, I wanted to go back and take a closer look at the gas mileage figures here. I went ahead and put all of my fuel mileage receipts into a spreadsheet here to try to get the most accurate miles per gallon possible. So you can see, you know, 14, 13, 15, um, low teens, low to mid teens for most of the in-town driving, the mixed driving, 16, 17, 19, 20, those are all trip miles. So looking at the average mileage for the last year and a half, um, I come out with 16.1658736 average miles per gallon, so it's not great, it's not terrible. So here are the last couple. So the first full tank that I ran through after I did all the work came out with 17.6 miles per gallon, so that's pretty good. Um, that's certainly an improvement over most of the mileage figures that I get, unless I'm purely highway. The second tank, um, that was a little lower. There was basically no highway driving, or very little highway driving on this tank, and that came out to 15.82. So again, that obviously went down from the first tank. 
just looking at these two, it comes out with an average of 16.72. So that's roughly about a 5% increase in the average. Now that's only two tanks versus, uh, what's that, like 40 tanks of gas in the, uh, the long-term average. So I'm going to track this over time, and I will report back in the future with a longer-term update to see what the overall mileage has done once I've gone through, you know, 10 or 15 tanks of fuel so that we get a better idea of the mileage. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you very much if you watched all the way to the end here. Like this video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to check back for the next one, and I will see you next time.